If you are familiar with my company, Mercedesource.com, you already know that I specialize in uh, Mercedes diesels, the older 616, 617, and 60 X series uh, diesels of the 70s, 80s, and, and early 90s. These cars are great cars. There's still hundreds of them <laughs> running around. I often joke with my employees about the number of wrenches that we keep selling for adjusting valves and the number of these uh, diesel fuel injector pressure testers we keep selling on a weekly basis. It tells us that there are still a lot of people out there maintaining these old Mercedes diesels. And today I want to talk a little bit more about fuel injectors. Now, I've got a number of videos up about fuel injectors, but we keep learning things. Just like anything in life, you never stop learning, and so is the case with these mechanical Bosch diesel fuel injectors. Um, you know, we offer all the items you need to rebuild these yourself, and it is, it is a fairly easy DIY job. It's something you do not need to be afraid of. We have the testing equipment, we have the tools, we have new nozzles, we have the adjuster shims that you have to install in here to, to set the release pressures, everything. We carry everything, including complete instructions on how to do this yourself. But we also rebuild these in our shop. So we've handled hundreds of these, and we, we're seeing some new problems develop with these, and it's largely due to age. You know, some of these, some of these are getting lots of miles. We're talking hundreds of thousands of miles on. People keep trying to use these housings when they rebuild their injectors. We don't, we don't have these parts new. All we have are the nozzles. You can replace the nozzles, but we're getting reports of people putting new nozzles in. They're saying, hey, there's something wrong with your nozzles because my injectors, you know, they're not firing properly or they're, they're, they're making funny uh, clicking noises or they're nailing or clattering. And we're finding out the problems are not related to the new nozzles. The problems are related to these old housings, okay? And in this video, I want to show you some of the problems we're running into when we rebuild these in our own shop. Sometimes we have to reject these. That's right. Not every housing is rebuildable. So keep that in mind if you're considering rebuilding your own fuel injectors. But I want to show you some of these problems because some of these we've learned by a little pain ourselves and, and hopefully this will alleviate you of having to go through the pain of finding out, oh no, I've got a bad housing. Now what do I do? The first thing I want to talk about is cleanliness. This is extremely important, almost as important as when you work on a transmission. If you allow any particles of dirt, here's the nozzle and the central pin that moves up and down. If you allow the smallest bit of dirt to enter into this nozzle, it can cause scoring inside the pin housing and that will lead to the injector tip hanging up and causing that typical clang, 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 clang. So cleanliness is super important. When you handle these new nozzles that you get from us, you rinse them only in clean diesel fuel. You do not put them in any area where they can collect dirt or dust. And then when you're using the pump, we do, we do supply a filter, but this filter is not fine enough to keep out all, all particulates that may damage this little nozzle right here. So when you, when you get the pump, you want to put brand new diesel fuel right here in the reservoir and go ahead and pump out maybe a, a half a cup so that you clean the pump out, you clean the line out, make sure that's completely clean. And as you go through the testing process, do not reuse the old fuel that you have tested a previous nozzle with. You do your testing, you spray it into a container like we show in my instructions, and then now we're recommending that you discard that diesel fuel. Or you can filter it and reuse it in the car. But do not put used fuel, testing fuel, back into the pressure tester when you test your new nozzles or you could enter dirt into this delicate nozzle that you see right here. Let me explain some of the problems that we're seeing with these injector housings. 
you have the upper part of the housing and the lower part, and they're split in the center. This is how you separate them for overhaul. There is a problem that we're seeing with this central pin, or this, uh, this I call it, I mean, I call it the centerpiece here. And this centerpiece is what seals. There, there's, of course, no gasket here. The, the nozzle has to, to seat right there on that center piece. And, and we're seeing a lot of these, they're either scored or they're rusty and pitted. So if you have deep scoring in the centerpiece or you have pits, then you have to reject this piece right here. If you try to use it, you're going to have problems with your fuel injectors. The lower housing is usually not a problem. It gets really gummed up inside and what we use to clean that is a bottle brush like you see here. And you can even attach this to a drill to speed the cleaning process of going down in there and cleaning out all the carbon that may collect down in this lower half of the injector housing. So generally that, that's not a big problem there. But we are seeing a number of problems with this upper housing. And it has a lot to do with what's going on between the inlet right here and the outlet hole right down there. And without being able to cut these apart, you do not know, particularly if these injectors have been running uh, like waste vegetable oil, or they've been sitting around a long time and collecting rust and crud down in there. Uh, you can see, I've got one here that's, that's kind of dirty. There's, there's a couple things. We use a, uh, we make this little wire brush out of some, some small wire and a little alumin, um, I mean brass tube here. And we get this down in here and we can clean out the junk that may collect right down in there. And then of course we supply this real small wire that you want to try to feed through these little holes right here at the inlet. But even then, there are times we have to reject these upper housings. And let me show you the test we are currently using to determine whether or not these are acceptable to use. After we thoroughly clean these upper housing halves, we do a compressed air test. And, what we're, and this is kind of something we kind of have a feel for because you know you can kind of hear and feel what a good passage sounds like as you blow air through it and, and what one that doesn't, doesn't have good passage sounds like. I'm going to try to de demonstrate this just by how much the compressed air uh, deflects my glove on my finger. All right, and I can hear it too. This one's hardly even, uh, hardly even deflecting my glove. And I'm trying to push 110 PSI through here. And look at that, it's hardly even denting the, the glove on my index finger. Now this housing's good, okay. So watch the difference as I apply compressed air to this housing. See that? You can even hear the difference and you can see the difference in my glove. So we've determined that for some reason, you know, we've tried some of these, we've tried soaking them, we've tried all kinds of tricks to get them cleaned out. And in the end, we just have to reject them. So I highly encourage you, if you plan to rebuild your injectors or you're in the process of doing it, be sure and pay real close attention to number one, cleanliness with your fuel protecting that delicate nozzle from any contamination and then pay particular attention to these housings, particularly the upper one to make sure it is thoroughly clean and you have good air passage going through it. This will really help to guarantee a successful overhaul with your diesel fuel injectors.